Welcome to Reread. Today I'm reviewing Luke Skywalker and the Shadows of Minor by Matthew Stover. Been a while since I've read this. I remember my first review. I liked it. And a bunch of comments were on there going, Matt, this wasn't that very good of a, a book. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was very interested to see if I would like it again. Uh, first off, it begins where Luke Skywalker, and I remember this part clearly, is with someone called Gepton, who is like an investigator for the Republic, and he's been around since the Clone Wars. He didn't care for Jedi that much. Well, Luke wants to hire him to investigate someone on war crimes. He's like, well, who? He went, me. You know, because he Luke thinks that he killed a bunch of people. And so he's hired Gepton, who he had on good authority from a friend of Gepton's, or someone Gepton knew, that said he would, you know, investigate this to the end and build up a case to prosecute Luke Skywalker, because Luke feels like he's responsible for the deaths of thousands of people. And so you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And then the story tells into what really went on. Now, I will say this in the very first chapter, when it's talking about uh, the, the main villain is Shadow Spawn, who Luke figures out later on is Black Hole, uh, a Marvel comic character, who they give an excellent, Matthew Stover gives an excellent black uh, backstory to him, like why he called himself Black Hole, what his whole thing is. I forgot that Sith alchemy was ever mentioned into, you know, what he's doing uh, with, with all these people. Uh, of course, Lord Shadow, Shadow Spawn is a, I, I can't remember, some kind of code word. It's basically Lord Shadow's Spawn is what it is, which was nice. I didn't mind that little twist, but I remember that one too. And he basically works behind the scenes, and Luke tells, tells everyone that. Now, Finn Scheisha is also in this too, from the Marvel comic book, and there's, like I said, a lot of continuity in all Stover stuff. There seems to be a lot of continuity, not only from his past books, because um, well, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Anyway, uh, Lord Shadowspawn has these crystals that he can embed within people's brains and whatnot, and that's how he can control them. He he basically puts on like an X-Men hat, like uh, Professor X, and then he opens up his eyes. He's in the body of that person, you know, who, who has these shards or crystals into him. And he studied, he's one of the hands of the Emperor, and he studied the, the Sith the dark arts about this. I'm fine with all this. Um, you know, works for me. But uh, in it, he can make the guy feel fear, feel happiness, like he's smelling a nice warm cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> so hot chocolate is in Star Wars. That was nice to know. Um, now, there are these movies, these hollow vids of Luke Skywalker, and, and Luke is all mad because none of this is real, what really happened. You know, he's like, you know, he, he, there are Tatooine dragons. They're called credit dragons. He goes, and they don't, you know, blow fire. And there's this big uh, scene where Luke has like a sword, his lightsaber. He's riding a dewback, charging at a, a flying credit dragon who's breathing fire on him. You know, and Han's like, oh, come on, kid, get over it. Well, Han has a few holovids of himself as well, and he doesn't really mind the exaggerated stories. So I think that was pretty funny. And that's basically a punchline throughout, I mean, a recurring gag through the uh, book because someone goes, wait, Luke Skywalker? Like in Luke Skywalker and the Dragon Slayer? You know, whatever the movies were. And uh, same thing with Han Solo. Like Han Solo and something, did you really do that? And that's kind of funny. I, I enjoyed that. Now, the New Republic is trying to find Shadow Spawn. Luke discovers, of course, that his name is Black Hole. He actually fights who he thinks is Shadow Spawn, realizes the, the Lord Shadow's pawn, and basically rips the head off, but it feels like he's ripping off flesh too because, of course, the crystals are embedded in this, like, it says carbon, carbon, uh, carbonite-like helmet, the moon helmet that uh, Black Hole wears in the comic book. They, uh, you know, Matthew Stover explains the seriousness of that. And he uncovers Nick. Uh, Nick, I believe it's Nick Rustu from um, uh, Shatterpoint. And he's older now, but, uh, you know, now you have this. And, of course, this was written after the prequels, so the Clone Wars I mentioned. There's a lot of more continuity between the prequels and this, which I don't mind. It didn't seem, it didn't seem forced on this. But, of course, Nick, he, he got interrogated by Anakin once. Anyway... Uh, Lord Shadow Spawn discovers that Luke has a sister and goes after him, captures Leia, and Han and Leia have to, uh, I mean, Han and Luke have to rescue Leia. But again, there's so many other characters here that I want to talk about. First off, General Calrissian is in this. General Calrissian, he's still with the New Republic, and he is great. He's got a sense of humor. You know, he, he kind of runs Rogue Squadron. He's ahead of Rogue Squadron and everything. He makes sure to dress real nice. Finn Scheisse goes, you know, the Mandalorian's 
you know, think you're a cream puff dressing like that. He went, I like being underestimated. <laughs> you know, he's, he doesn't care. He's like, he said, like, well, you never saw Crix May Dean wearing that kind of stuff. He goes, yeah, but Crix May Dean doesn't look like this. Plus he has a little going on in the middle, if you know what I mean. You know, <laughs> it's just Lan another reason why I remembered loving this so much. I love how Lando is portrayed here. He's confident, sure of himself. He's smart. You know, because when Princess Leia needs to borrow a B-Wing, needs Tycho to give her a ride in the B-Ring, uh, she kind of pulls rank on him and says, no, you're going to disobey Lando Carisian and, and follow me. And so they kind of, the, rogue, the rogues kind of try to hide the fact that they just broke. You know, they act like they're on a special mission. And Lando already knows that Leia's commandeered the, one of the B-Wings. He's like, oh, special mission, huh? Hmm. They, do, do, do you use my codes? Oh, yes, sir. Hmm, wonder what special mission I had them on. He, he, he goes, where's Princess Leia? Uh, sir, we can't locate her in the, in the base. Hmm, I see. So should we contact the rogues and call them back? He went, no, that's all right. But see, Lando knows because you can't pull one over on Lando because he's really smart. And it talks about his keenness and how he kind of, you know, works and it, it tries to outsmart his opponents. Again, I love it. I love Lando. Lando being a main character in this. Really great stuff. Um... Solo is written really good, too. Oh, they're, they're, wait, hold on, hold on. Lana Carisian has some really funny... Uh, I wrote some stuff here. Uh, when when Rogue Squadron is outmanned, outgunned, you know, and they're like, oh, no, we're going to die. And then Hobbs goes, I know what we need, Captain. And Wedge's like, what's that? He went, a miracle. Can it, Hobbs? You know, and then suddenly this whole fleet comes out of nowhere, and they're like, what's that? And Lana Carisian goes, did someone call for... Did someone order a miracle? I love that. I love that. And then later on, when he and 3PO take over the ship, 3PO's trying to talk to the ship, and 3PO's offended because the ship is flirting with him. And then uh, Landy goes, well, okay. And he grabs uh, 3PO because 3PO doesn't... He said, oh, the thing she's suggesting and stuff. Like, yes, you know, a little comedic moment. And Lando looks, look, gra grabs 3PO by the face and goes, flirt back. Like, you know, let's get, you know, let's get this done. <clears throat> Great stuff with Lando Carisian. Han Solo has another great scene too. He runs into this girl, and, and, and I don't know how to pronounce her name, and I don't care. But she's a redhead. By the way, Joe, uh, uh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. But she's redheaded. She's a redheaded girl, and she ends up being Nick's girlfriend, really. But we don't know that at first. And she and Han, she's, she's friends with Han. She befriends Han and Leia and says, hey, by the way, are you the Han Solo? Wow, that's cool. Hey, is that your blaster rifle? Oh, man, that's an antique. Let me see that. Here. And Han doesn't want to give her the blaster. His blaster went, no, here, you can take mine. Look at mine. So he's appreciating hers, and she's appreciating his, and going, all right, good trade. And she walks away. He was like, what trade? Come back here. And she was like, hey, guys, I got the Han Solo's blaster in a trade, you know, telling her group of pirates that she got it. And meanwhile, Leia is talking to R2, saying, hey, where's Luke? Because... Luke's um, uh, X-Wing went down, or I don't know if it was a crash. I, I, oh, I should go back and look at that. But uh, anyway, they're trying to find Luke, and he keeps wanting to play this video of the pirate they just talked to. He said, no, no, we want to know where Luke is. Where's Luke? And Han goes, let her play the, let her play the videos. And so um, she play, they play the video of the pirate. Now, I should mention before this that the pirate knows Han from a from his movies and whatnot, but she hears, she's he she's heard tale of Han Solo too. They talk about the Galandro, Galandro showdown, and he goes, well, she's like, did you really outdraw Galandro? He went, well, no, it didn't happen that way. You see what happened? We were in these tombs and a, a trap went off. She went, huh, really? I, I always figured you shot him in the back. Because <laughs> she says, I don't think you're that fast of a draw. <clears throat> well, anyway, as they're playing R2's message, it shows her get, telling her plan that she's about to befriend Han and Leia and steal their ship. And then Han quickly, after seeing that message, whips out his gun, whips out the gun from her holster, points at her and clicks. Like he doesn't even bother asking questions. He, he knows that they're the bad guy. Flicks out, clicks, and it, of course it doesn't have a power cell. And the pirate goes, huh, you are that fast. I love it. That's how the chapter ends. Of course, she didn't give him a... Uh, there's no power pack in the blaster. But then later on, when she surround, uh, uh, when they surround Han and Leia, she points the blaster at him, and Han makes a move toward her, and she pulls the trigger, too, and it clicks. And she goes, what? He went, you really think I'd give you a loaded blaster? And then they start fighting again. Oh, it's just great. It's great stuff. But they end up stealing the ship, uh, sh this the pirate and her crew go off and they start shooting down, shooting on Lando's men. 
Lando's like, Han, what are you doing? He gets the comm link and tells, uh, ask Han, what's he doing shooting down the fighters? And Han goes, that's not me. It's someone else in the Falcon. Get that Falcon back. He went, okay, I will. He went, hey, 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 hey. He's like, shoot it down, a rogue squadron. And rogue squadron's like, aye, aye, captain. He's like, no, 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 don't shoot it. He's like, Lando, if you make one more, if you if you put one scratch on that uh, Millennium Falcon, I'll... And then Lando interrupts and goes, never notice it through all the other dents it already has? Yeah, right. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> there's so many good moments. Oh, there's another one where Wedge, Han Solo is flying off with Leia, and Wedge goes, take care of that pretty lady. And Han goes, I always do. And then he realizes that Wedge was talking about Princess Leia and not the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> It, it's so good. It is so good. So many moments on here to talk about. But anyway, toward the end, of course, <clears throat> Leia is freed. Uh, Lord Shadowspawn, or Cronal, which is what his name is, Black Hole, is defeated, but still out there somewhere. And uh, meanwhile, it goes back to the epilogue where Gepton turns in his report to Luke Skywalker. And Luke is mad. Why? Because it's a screenplay for another holovid. <laughs> Captain has decided that investigating it, Luke is a real hero. And yeah, he should have killed those people. It, it wasn't an accident. They should have died. Luke did the right thing, you know, because Luke killed a bunch, uh, gave an order and made a decision that killed a bunch of people. Luke doesn't want to kill people anymore. And this is where he's taken that turn from the Marvel comic book is what, uh, is what, it's, it's really brilliant. Because in the Marvel comic book, eh, I told you, uh, Luke is slashing up aliens left and right and killing stormtroopers left and right. And he's still General Skywalker. Well, at the end of this book, he has retired his commission. He's no longer a general anymore. He's out of the army now. And he's going to make a conscious effort not to kill people so much. So this is where the turning point is. And a, a, a maturity, a bit of maturity added for Luke Skywalker, which is needed in the expanded universe. Because before all this happened, Luke went from, you know, <laughs> lightsaber happy, killing everyone, to not killing a soul. What happened? Well, this. He got tired of war. He got tired of the conflict. He figured no matter how many people were killed, it didn't make a difference. He'd still be here today focusing on this uh, problem. You know, and there'll be more issues in the future, he realizes. So he can go about it two ways, killing everyone in sight or trying to find an alternate solution. So that's what he decides. It's really well done. This is actually better than I remember. So bring on the hate here um, because I love it even more than I did the first time I read it. It's a really good novel. There you have it. Sorry, reread it. I still love it. All right, folks. See you next time.